afternoon sa Ignacio. My, my perspective is a little distinct and I, I say that without any apologies. Everybody, whether you decide you want to vote yes or whether you decide you want to vote no, should be acknowledged as Belizeans who are voting their conscience. Right? The last thing we want to do is turn against each other as such. Right? And so, I totally agree with Don Hector when he says that Belize's territorial integrity is completely intact. History bears us out from 1798, even from prior to 1798, the Baymen, the British settlers, have been working at consolidating sovereignty over this territory. From 1798, Spain started what will be referred to as the acquiescence of sovereignty. Right? In other words, they began to recognize that they were unable to, in any way, shape or form, whether it be political, whether it be juridical, whether it be military, they were unable in any way or form to maintain or to establish sovereignty over this territory as such. So from 1798, the consolidation of our sovereignty by the payment, by the British, by our public meeting was very much in order so that by the time we come to 1821, there is no question that our ownership of this territory was complete. As a matter of fact, from 1806, we were all the way down at the SARS-2. And, and in all honesty, we were beyond the SARS-2, right? We were nearly at the borders of Trujillo. We were all the way into the Petén, as such. And one correction I want to make, and I always emphasize this, Guatemala claims they became independent in 1821, but the truth does not bear that out. Because when Spain lost and surrendered Mesoamerica in 1821, the whole of Mesoamerica was, became the Mexican Empire under Agustin Uturbide in 1823 because of liberal factions in Mexico, they overthrew Iturbide and the new Republic of Mexico cut Central America out of the Republic. And Central America in 1823 then becomes independent as the United Provinces of Central America. There was still not a Guatemalan Republic at that point in time. It wasn't until 1838 when attempts to create a republic government for Central America failed that the, that the five provinces decided to go their separate ways. So it's not until 1839 that Guatemala, the Republic of Guatemala comes into existence without a constitution, by the way, without recognition by Spain, by the way, and that is why Central America has never been able to clearly establish its borders on its own. Because these five provinces never got a clear defined map and a clear defined independence from Spain. So Guatemala and Honduras have gone to the ICJ. Costa Rica and Nicaragua have gone to the ICJ. El Salvador and Honduras have gone to the ICJ. All of them because none of them knew exactly where their borders were. Right? And they had gone to the ICJ after a lot of violence among themselves as such. Right? So the borders of Central America has been taking shape post their independence as such. Right? During that whole time, the British had consolidated their sovereignty over the settlement of Honduras, or the settlement on the Bay of Honduras, the British settlement on the Bay of Honduras as such. Yes, way back, 
from 1806 that started. And as the lector rightly pointed out, the Clayton Bulwar Treaty clearly established that Belize from January 1st, or British Honduras, had its borders where we now, in our constitution, establish our borders. This was reintroduced in 1856 by the Dallas Clarendon Treaty as such, where the British agreed to give up the Bay Islands to Honduras, they agreed to give up the Mosquito Coast to Nicaragua, but they made it clear that their territory of British Honduras had sovereignty, had been consolidated from the Rionda to the Sarstoon as such, from Cape Gracia, from Gracias and Dios Falls to Garbos Falls, all the way to the Mexican frontier as such. Those border demarcations have not been something new. They have been demarked over and over. And as Don Hector says, the 1859 treaty very emphatically, Guatemala signs that, that treaty, making it very, very clear that the, from the mouth of the Sarstoon to Gracias and Dios Falls are turning right in a straight line to Garbos Falls and then due north to the Mexican frontier, all territory north and west of that line of demarcation was the property of Her Britannic Majesty. And all territory south and west, so all territory north and east of that territory was for Her Britannic Majesty and all territory south and west was for Guatemala. So, so that border has been there since forever. And it has been demarcated time after time. In 1860, between 1860 and 61, Captain Ray and Colonel Madrazo from Guatemala physically went there and put down the currents, the border demarcating currents at Gracias and Dios Falls and at Garbos Falls. In 1929 to 1931, Fernando Cruz, Right? For Guatemala and Fred Brunton for British Honduras revisited those sites and moved the currents and put solid concrete monuments at those sites, establishing the western borders, sorry, re, re demarcating the western borders of this territory as such. The question of ownership of this territory is too strongly etched into our history, too strongly etched into the treaties that have been signed both in 1859 and in 1931, in which Guatemala confirms the signature as a there of Pedro de Aicinena in 1959. The signature as a there of Alfredo Skinner Klee in 1931. Foreign ministers of Guatemala, foreign ministers who go back to their own parliament and tell them there is no, no way that Guatemala can establish any shred of evidence of ownership in any way or form to any part of the territory that at that point in time was called British Honduras. So our right to this territory, our ownership of this territory is very, very strongly etched into our history, etched into the treaties of our history as such. There is no way any court, any court that consists of judges of high moral standing that could rule any way other than to determine that, that those borders are legal, right? So when we ask the ICJ to determine the borders, I want to clarify something. Determine is not to define. Determine in law means to accept as standing what the treaties have established. And so our treaties are very, very, very powerful treaties. 
and nobody could declare them null and void. The Convention of Vienna makes it clear that no treaty, the treaties are sacrosanct. The treaties between nations are the establishment of international law. Right? That no treaty can be declared null and void if the two countries did not make an effort to fulfill the treaties as such. And the Treaty of 1859 and the preamble tells us clearly, whereas the boundaries of our Britannic settlement and possessions in the Bay of Honduras and the, and the territories of the Republic of Guatemala has not yet been ascertained and marked out. The two countries agreed to define the boundary of Orset and have resolved to conclude a convention for that purpose. The primary responsibility at the 1859 treaty was the demarcation at the boundary, a demarcation that occurred in 1860-61 and again in 1929-1931 as such, a demarcation that was signed off by foreign ministers of Guatemala as such. Right? So those boundaries are very, very clearly established. International law makes it clear that the first and most important aspect to be considered in 381A is international conventions and treaties. And our international conventions and treaties have clearly established. Secondary to that is universal customs. Universal customs like the respect and stability of boundaries. Universal customs like occupation. And we have been occupying this territory unimpeded, peacefully, for over 220 years. Unimpeded and peacefully exercising political, juridical, and military occupation of this territory for over 220 years, people. There's no stronger establishment of customary of international and universal custom than that. The Mayas down south have shown us that occupation, unimpeded,